Dar, uh, tonight's project is to work on the new rear end for it. The car actually has an eight and three quarter inch Chrysler rear in it, which are good rears, guys like them, but um, that one, the posi seems to be worn out and I need to do wheel cylinders. And for the price of these rears, they come with the uh, limited slips in them and you can get three, at least three different ratios right out of the junkyard for them. So they're cheap, they're simple, they're super strong. So I'll build this and take that one out and sell it and come out ahead. You know, I just, I know these rears and we just need to take a couple inches out of the one side to make it the correct width. It's a little wide right now. So we will shorten the long side tube and then use two short shafts to come out with a correct width rear. So as you can see, I've been grinding everything off and we're going to get ready to cut this down and put it in. So we're narrowing this housing using original axles. This is the uh, driver's side axle, which is the long one. This is the passenger side. So we're going to take the difference here and cut it out of the long tube and then use two short side axle shafts. So we'll come over to here and you get a measurement of 17 and 15 16 almost 17 and 3 8 and then on the long side you get 20 and a quarter which leaves you with taking about 2 and 7 8 off um, some people go 2 and 7 8 2 and 15 16 and some people even take 3 inches off you don't have much play but there's a little bit of room the axle would actually ride in a different position on the bearing and the seal so you really want to be as close as you can get it so we're going to cut we're going to measure and we're going to take that that much out of this long side tube I uh, made marks at 12 and a half and now it went all the way around the tube. Now we're going to line the tape up with the dots that we just made. Alright, now we want to cut out 2 and 7 eighths, so now we need to go 2 and 7 eighths over and make a bunch more dots and then put more tape on. Okay, now I'll just double check the measurements, make sure that it's square all the way. Alright, so the idea now is that we're just going to cut right on the edge of the tape and cut that chunk out. Um, so, there's a couple different ways on where to position this piece. Some people like to position it based on where their suspension parts go or where the leaf spring sits or where the U-bolt sits. Um, we're not using an axle jig to center this back up. We're just going to use the two pieces of C-channel like that. So I wanted to put it, I wanted to put it in a little bit to leave enough meat here to get a good square surface to clamp on. If you go too far out, then you're not going to have enough material to get into the C channel well. So this should work out well. Um, I'm pretty sure my leaf springs are pretty far out into the tube. And you know, if your leaf spring was here, this is all leverage for the tire to put on this axle tube. So when the leaf springs are out further, it gives less leverage. So it should work out well. We'll start cutting these now. So to keep the axle clocked the same, meaning everything in line, you're going to want to put some kind of scribe line or marker line through it so you can line it back up. So this should be 
completely parallel to the axle tube here, which looks pretty good to me. So I'm going to put that there, and then I'm just going to take the angle grinder and cut a little, cut a little line there. All right, we're gonna make the cut. We're gonna use a, just the same grinder we made the scribe line with. job of cleaning your axle out than I did here. All right, now we're going to cut the inside. You want to cut the outside first so that you don't have to cut this piece off of that small piece like in a vise or something. So make sure you cut the outside first. the section cut out of the middle we're going to peel these tapes off oh. and then we're gonna butt the axle tube back up and take its final well not its final but its measurement to see where we're at what is it with me and tape we got the tape off and you can see a little bit left of my alignment mark so that's how it's gonna go uh, I don't have an alignment tool, an alignment tool that goes throughout the whole thing and bolts into the bearings. That's the way to do it, but I don't have one. So we're going to use the best that we got, which is C-channel, or you can use angle iron. So put that up halfway. We're going to set that on there. This is just three inch C-channel. And what this is going to do is it's going to help center the axle tubes on each other. And this one will go in here. Oh boy. Oh boy. All right. Snug that down. Now I gotta find my clocking mark. Somewhere, maybe? There it is. We've made our cut and we got it. Same as the other side, 17 and 3 8 And we have it all clamped and mocked up. On the back side, the, the, parallel, the parallel line that we cut was the alignment mark. So we align that back up, it's on the back side. And I'm just going to slide an axle shaft in to make sure everything moves freely and smoothly. It's not binding on the bearing or anything. And then we're going to V the tubes and weld them. So we'll, uh, this is a short side axle shaft now out of the 8.8, not the long side. We cut the long side of the housing down and it just goes right in real smooth. So that's a pretty good indication that you're somewhat close. If it was really bad, you'd be binding up on that bearing. But so we'll take it back apart and V the tubes, clean them up real well, tack them, and then fully weld them. All 
right, so here's the axle with the three inches, well, two and seven eighths cut out and V'd and butt that welded back together. Um, I smoothed it down. It needs a little bit of filling, but I actually might go over it again with a big fat bead because this isn't in the way of my spring perch and I think it might be a little stronger than grinding the weld back off. Even though it should penetrate all the way through, in my mind it seems like it would give me a little peace of mind. So I'll probably run another bead over top and be done with it. Since you saw this last, we had talked about running another pass over the weld. And that's what I did. I just wrote another big bead over it. You know, I figure it's a little stronger. I also did four small stitches welding the tube to the housing. They're supposed to help keep it from rotating should you ever make a lot of power. Uh, put new bearings and seals in it and gave it a repaint. Nothing really that was that exciting to watch. I also put the backing plates on um, and had the carrier out and checked the clutches in the posi. So everything's good to go. We're going to pull out the old rear, put in the new one, and set it on some spring perches that will have to be welded on once we get the pinion angle set. So basically just gonna mock it up. I uh, put some tape on here to keep the uh, axle from getting painted where I have to weld the perches on. So that has to be done. All right, let's get the old one out. So you get the idea. The perches are the wrong ones. They're like just from a trailer that I had laying around. The, the new ones are in the mail. So we're doing this to mock it up. We'll have to take the perches back off, put the right ones in, tack weld it once we set the pinion angle, and then take it out and fully weld the perches on. Obviously, we're going to have to cut a lot of these U-bolts off too. They're extremely long. And uh, going to the 8.8, .8, I had to get um, larger U-bolts because the eight and three quarter was like a three inch rear. This is three and a quarter. So they don't, they didn't fit over the axle. I put a little tension on one U-bolt so that it'll hold pressure so I can rotate the pinion up and get a, it roughly set of where the pinion angle is going to be. Um, we're not going to do anything permanent yet because I got to wait for the new spring perches to come in to be welded in, but we're just getting an idea how everything is going to lay out. So we'll snug these up, trim off the excess, put the brakes and the tires on, and see how it looks. 